Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Ali here. Today I'm sharing with you our top travel hacks. Okay, so most of these are obviously about saving some money. And one of the places where you can save a lot of money is in tipping. So you want to find out what the going rate is, where you're going, or if they even tip at all. In some countries, it's really frowned upon and it's discouraged. In some countries, um, it's just, you know, you round up the change. In some countries, it's 10% or so, 10 to 12%. And in some countries, it's actually included as a service charge as a part of your bill. So if you leave a tip, that's in addition to the service charge, which is where the money is going. Most of it is going towards tipping. So make sure you do your research on each of the countries and you'll be able to save some money there if you're not over tipping. We tend to over tip as Americans because we're used to tipping, you know, at least 20%. And so if you do that in other countries um, and they're not expecting it, A, it's going to come off bad. Um, and B, you're going to be spending a lot of extra money that you don't need to spend. The next one is um, if you are staying at a hotel, uh, oftentimes when you check in, they will say, hey, we've got breakfast here at the hotel. You can prepay um, your breakfast for your entire stay and, um, and get a discount if you, you know, prepay it. The problem is, is that most times you're not even going to be able to get breakfast at the hotel. So prepaying all of your breakfast in advance is um, basically just a waste of money at that point because um, you're going to you know, either be running out or you'll have a little bit of jet lag and oversleep because they only have breakfast for so long. So definitely um, skip uh, pay prepaying for your breakfast at the hotel and you're going to save yourself some money. Next one is you're going to save some money on splitting food if you're traveling with somebody. So obviously there's two of us, my husband, Rob and I, uh, traveling together. And what we usually do is we pick out a starter and a meal and we split those two things between the two of us saves us some money and we don't end up eating so much food because you're going to snack and pick some things along the way um, or, you know, drink a lot of water as well. So you don't end up, you know, just consuming more than you really need to. And then you feel so sluggish. So that's actually going to save you quite a bit there. Now, um, another way that we um, save money, another hack is to buy food at the grocery store. Um, so it's going to be uh, a lot cheaper to, that's why we usually stay in an Airbnb because we're able to cook, but it's a lot cheaper for us uh, because a lot of times we're renting a car and we can take food with us to have for lunch and for snacks while we're out um, sightseeing and things like that. So it's good to go ahead and just pop into the local grocery store, pick up some groceries and bring them back to your hotel with you. Even if you're doing that each day, if you're in a hotel, if you're an Airbnb, obviously you'll have a refrigerator and you can just do full meals. Just make sure that you plan it out, um, kind of what you have in mind so you don't go there and just walk around and buy a bunch of stuff and then you end up overspending there too. So keep that in mind. Um, the next one is using pub public transportation instead of uh, taxis and Ubers all the time, things like that. Um, is you're going to save a ton of money doing that. Now, what you'll want is you'll want to make sure like, uh, we use the metros a lot in different countries when we travel. And a lot of time, depending on how long we go, usually for a minimum of a week, uh, oftentimes we'll go for a whole month. So, uh, check if they have discounts for passes for, instead of just buying a, a, like a one trip, a lot of times they'll have passes you can buy for like a whole week of unlimited um, trips or passes where you can buy for a whole month or in different increments. So make sure you look and see what is available um, so that you're able to, to save some money uh, through transportation as well. Plus, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to get to know the city a little better and kind of get a feel for how the locals um, move and live and things like that. 
Um, the next one is to, you want to avoid <laughs> as many transaction fees as possible. And where you're going to pay a lot of transaction fees are at the ATMs. So there's a couple problems at the ATMs. And the first one is that, um, so most of the ATMs in foreign countries will ask you, so they'll all charge a fee, most all of them. Um, but they'll ask you if you want uh, them to exchange, to do the current currency exchange for you, or um, if you just want to um, have your bank do it later. And a lot of times they'll word it to make you think like it's gonna be more expensive when it's not. So always get your money out in the, uh, don't have them do the currency exchange for you because you are going to lose a lot of money that way. And then the other way that you'll save money is, um, of course, if you're using a card that doesn't have international transaction fees. What we do is we take out um, one big sum at a time as opposed to going to the machine real often because that's actually going to cost you a lot more money in your transaction fees. Um, the next one is not just going to the popular places. Um, there's a few where you're like, okay, I definitely have to go see this or that um, in this location, but don't only visit those places because there are so many really cool hidden gems um, in all of these locations and you just have to kind of go off the beaten path a little bit. It's okay, obviously, to go see some of the cool popular things because, I mean, why wouldn't you? Like, if you're going to Paris, of course you're going to go see the Eiffel Tower, um, but there's lots of other cool things uh, in the nooks and crannies of those side streets that are really cool. And the nice thing is that oftentimes those things are free, which is great, so you save some money there as well. The next way you're gonna save some money down that route is also some self-guided tours. Like um, there's lots of different apps and I know obviously in the Rick Steves app, you're gonna be able to download um, some walking tours from there. So make sure you check and see uh, what cities have free walking tours available. Download the app and you can do your own walking tour at your pace. Um, and if you want to stop and continue another day, you can do that too. So that's really great way to see, to see um, you know, a new city, a new area. And again, that's a great way to also find some of those hidden gems. And then the last one um, to me is so important is to learn a little bit of the local language. I'm not saying you have to be a, you know, language specialist, uh, but it is very important for you to learn a few phrases. And some of the ones I always learn when we're going somewhere is I like to say, hello, um, thank you, goodbye, and um, excuse me. I also try to figure out how to say, um, do you speak English? That one doesn't always work because it's a little bit more challenging with so many words involved in the sentence. But it is important to um, go ahead and try to learn something. So, you know, just kind of learn them, for, to try working on them for a week or two before you go to the location. And that's really going to help you out. So hopefully these uh, kind of money saving travel hacks will help you as you plan your next trip abroad or maybe your first trip abroad. Um, have you had any of these experiences? Make sure you leave uh, some comments down below if you have any other travel hacks um, on saving money down below in the comments. Like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well, and we'll see you on the next trip.